folks, welcome to this exciting video where you once again join me in the wild landscape of Scotland and today I've come to document a piece of history which we've never seen before on the channel. I was on this path a few weeks ago with the channel DJ. I'm at the, basically the Hill of Lure in Angus, Scotland and I was here documenting the monument and that a couple of weeks ago on the videos whereas today I've come back to document a chapel hidden within one of the forests here and I think it's quite hard to navigate to I've just got like a basic idea of where it is within the forest here so I'm going to document it and see what history is there within the forest last time I went looking for a chapel up Glen Prosen I never found it and I ended up finding a crazy like spooky cabin in the woods so it'll be interesting today to see what we find I'll be going into lands that I've never been on before it's mad to think that history is hidden all over in Scotland. Anyway, I'll update you once I'm further into this mission. So there's many of these ancient old dry steen dikes which run across the land here on this lower hill, but I believe this is the dike line here which I need to follow down into the darkness of the forest, folks. I'm following this old piece of history down, but I'm not sure how treacherous it's going to get because I think it can be quite boggy in areas like this. This is a similar area that we had to walk down to when I was with the Channel DJ and we went to the Lure Monument on the hill. We followed a dike line that day as well. So it's just like crazy sometimes how you can use markers on the terrain like that. I've only got a general idea of where this chapel may be, so it's just like a spontaneous adventure. I'm hoping if I follow down here I'll get near the area, but I'm not sure how dense the forest's going to be. Because sometimes you can get bits of forest like that that's pure, dark and thick. Other times there's bits like this that's more open. So it's going to be an interesting adventure, folks. Once again, I'm documenting pieces of history in little corners of Scotland that's never seen. And they're hardly ever documented on videos. And sometimes the terrain that I navigate to bring these adventures, it just blows my mind. Wild Scotland at its finest. This is an extreme environment right here, folks. It's a pure bog right down the side of this wall. And I'm just hoping that pretty soon I get a sign of the history through the trees. Look at that, folks. A ladybird living on top of that post right there. That's the natural habitat for the sort of wildlife. Little ladybirds. Items like that hidden within the landscape. Just check it out. There's a kind of bit of here. I'm not sure if it's an old drain or something for the land there, like, but I'm just kind of navigating. There's only like a narrow route to get through, most commonly used from deer and stuff like that. And that gives you an idea how remote some of these abandoned places are that I go to. There's literally no easy way to walk into this one. Check this out, folks. I can see a kind of opening in the forest here. It's just extreme mossy, wet wilderness that I'm exploring today. There's no other word for it. Check it out, folks. This is what I mean by certain parts of these forests can just look so different. You walk like 100 metres and then the ground's not boggy anymore. And it's just incredible. I'm just kind of heading over here just to see what I can see within this land. So I haven't updated the video for a minute, folks, because I'm just gassed after walking up this hill. It's so warm. And, like, I haven't found it yet. I've walked right around this piece of the forest and then back up. The trouble is, certain bits of the forest are so damaged with the trees falling, it's hard to locate history within it. This is crazy, folks. This adventure's been mad. I've seen so many deer, they're just kicking about down here. And I've walked right around the bottom of here and not seen it yet. I'm just keeping my eyes peeled for the abandoned history. I think I might have to go back along and check near the area that I walked down the hill. It could be in that area. I'm taking the shortcut back along the forest. I've just been keeping my eyes peeled for the history the whole way along and often that's what it's like on an adventure, you have to navigate extreme landscapes to find the best things. And last time I went looking for a chapel, I never found it up Glen Prosen. I'm just hoping it's not the same again today folks. 
The landscape's just ancient around here. I'm going to check in the forest straight ahead of us. There's an area there which I've never looked in yet. Check it out folks, this is an incredible mossy canyon here. Carved from the waterway right down to bedrock. And this lure hill that we're on today is actually a solid nugget of bedrock. And there's a good few quarries on it. I need to try and get across the other side of this. I'm just going to trust in the grip of my boots. I'm going to try and land over there. Maybe I should go to here. Yes, I've done it, folks. I'm just going to try and get around the bottom of the forest now and navigate my way up. I'm starting to run out of directions to go here now. But each bit of forest I'm in is just so different. It's truly the wild landscapes here, folks. But I'm just not seeing any evidence of the structure yet. There's so much fallen timber and trees to climb through. So as promised on this adventure, folks, I've found the ancient piece of history here on the hill. And it took me a bit of searching. Wow, I can't even believe I found it. I was starting to think I would never see it. I've been walking so long up these hills and down these hills, just trying to imagine if they had built a carrack, where would it be located? Wow, here it is, out in the edge of the forest here, overlooking this incredible view over the land. And I love finding stuff like this. Even though I've walked so far, it's now worth it. Because I wasn't even sure like, if I was wasting my time walking through this. Often I only have a small window of opportunity to go exploring at a weekend. Sometimes if you're walking through wild forests and bogs, ducking under trees and stuff like that, you start to wonder if the adventure's worth it to find a thing like this. And then when you see it, boom, it's totally worth it, folks. This is so special to document another bit of history of Scotland here. Hardly seen, hardly even heard of. And it wasn't actually easy to get to the direction I came. I would have been better probably coming straight down where they've clear felled this area. But I wasn't sure of the exact location. I just knew roughly where it was going to be. And I'm so glad that I just headed along this way that little bit further. So, sometimes stonework in places like this dates back to ancient times. And I can see there's actually some interesting old carved stones here. So it'll be cool to see what history remains. It's apparently an old kirk, and you can see the yard as well of it, the old churchyard, or kirkyard as you would call it. And I believe there was burials here, and there is headstones here. Wow, this is mad, folks. Think how old this land is, and the history that we're witnessing here. It's just incredible to imagine. Look how thick the walls have been on this old kirk. And just check this out. They put a lead thing here recently, I believe, to like protect it. Because just check out the ancient carving right here. Wow. You can imagine the candle sitting in there burning. See an interesting thing? There's maybe actually been an urn or something in there because we can see evidence there's been hinges and there's been a little door. And you can imagine the shape of the little wooden door. Just think they've carved that out of a bit of sandstone, similar to what the buildings are made of around here. And you can tell that from the different stones which is within it. And look at the detail of like the leaves they are carved. It's crazy this history's just left here. Day and night. Can it's just sitting here out in the wild lands, like never seen. It blows my mind how ancient some of this is. And look at that, the thistle, that's what it is, which shows the sign of Scotland here. Look at these ancient stones underfoot and stuff like that. I'll have a read of this as well. In this ancient graveyard lie the bodies I can't read, of members of the family of Bower, of King, the Kingdom Canettles and methy. It's hard to read because it's so eroded here. Including the, it's hard to read this bit here, it's incredibly worn, Alexander Bauer, 1746. So that puts an idea, a date on it. It says here folks, in 1926, 
the sacrament house was found during the course of excavations and set up in the wall. So that's what this is here. It's a sacrament house. And that must have mean the, the remains was inside it like a little house. It's crazy to imagine that ancient history here. Look at this stone here which is carved almost with like a Celtic symbol. And look, it's got these three cutouts, the squares on it. Just think about the guy with his little chisel carving that out. Think about the times he was alive here. Carving out these, what must be religious symbols of the time. It's almost like... It's almost like a Pictish stone, so I'm not sure if it's from the era of the Picts. They maybe came and settled in at an area like this. It's such a special place. With chapels like this, often the stones were laid within the grounds of them at a later time, whereas originally they may have been laid within the grounds, which would be like the graveyard. Oh, I see something which is incredible, folks. I've just noticed a detail. I believe this giant straight stone here carved may have at one time had this on top of it i think it's been a giant high stone wow it's just mind-blowing to see these ancient stones and look at the way it's carved in here see when i find stuff like this folks it makes it worth walking through that forest the wild landscape it's hard to even see with the human eye what's carved in there because it's so eroded. But I can see there, like, there's a skull. Wow, it's mad just to get an essence of the people that may have walked these lands and carved these stones. And look at all the detail of this. You have to imagine, this was a full building at one time, head height and above. Just think how grand it may have looked. see an angle like that folks it's just incredible abandoned history and it's sometimes just amazing keeping on finding these like abandoned places hidden and scattered within the lands sometimes the places that i need to go when i try and find them that's what makes the adventure so special look at the thickness of these walls similar to what we saw in some of the other ancient structures recently on the channel look at the way these are carved as well this must have been maybe the peak of the roof. This must have been excavated in 1926, and sometimes back then they did things to preserve the history, and that's when the holes may have been carved into that cross stone. They may have actually been trying to restore it and put it back together with like a metal brace. But you can see the carving, think about that, the technique and stuff to carve that out back in the day, to get it perfectly straight. The craftsmanship ancient times in Scotland you've got to think it was like thousands of years ago things like this it's not just like hundreds of years we're talking thousands of years ago and it's just mind-boggling history potentially they rebuilt this in 1926 because I believe like they've obviously included that special stone within the wall when they did that but you get an idea of the stonework and stuff with the outer foundations. Wow, it's so cool to see that. Often it's just like, it looks like a mossy pile of stones in a forest, but once you start to look at the details, you can almost uncover the history and imagine the people who like, were here every day and this was their life. Maybe some people stayed here all their days, a minister of the lands or whoever was in charge. And look at this, here's one of the original doors. You can imagine the minister or whoever walking out and then looking over this prominent land, which probably features many incredible Pictish stones. And then look at this ancient boundary wall. It's got these proper big stone slabs on the top. And Lure Hill is incredible for being fully made of stone. It's basically just a solid stone hill. Once you dig down the soil, no very far, you normally find solid bedrock. So I don't think they would have had to go far to get what they needed to build this. 
But as you can see, there's been some skilled stone carving going on back in those days. Look how this tree has just become part of the wall. It's grown out of the ancient history here. And it's roots is right between the stones. Wow, oh, yeah, it's ancient. Maybe a place like this would have grown some crops and things like that in their garden. But also, it may have had other little outbuildings as well in the perimeter here. So look, I can see mounds. I'm not sure if it had burial mounds or whatever. That's an interesting detail there of the potential history in this area. Because I can see two strange mounds, but then I suppose that was maybe when they were excavating in 1926. This may be from the little trenches where they were excavating. And just think about them when they found that specially carved stone. Just think about how long ago that dates back to. But also the history of like the family who's buried in this area, the Bauer family and the other family there. I'm not sure if it was them that decided to excavate it, excavate the site in 1926 or if it was a government thing. But yeah, there's another door here. So there's been a few doors. So there's maybe been wooden internal walls at this structure here. You can see how the tree roots just bust things like this apart because the tree's coming right through and there's the root at the other side of the wall. That's how sometimes videos like this just save the small little bits of history. And once again, we're kind of in the lure area, on the edge of Lure Hill. And this is quite hard to get to. And the other week when I was here documenting some other history on the hill here at Lure, we had no idea this was here. And even today, I struggled to find it. And I was literally just over there, the other side of that dike line. I checked that whole forest. And then it wasn't until I came around here, I thought, if I don't see it over this way, I was going to just kind of head back up to the track. And it just goes to show, folks, it's worth keeping looking, because the history is always out there to be found, out there to be documented. Now, on this adventure, I need to try and get back off this hill. So I'm hoping I can just, like, find the route here. Look at it. One of these stones is just one of those big, it's like a white quartzy type material. It's been probably brought here and then just dumped down at the door at the side of the gate. I'm guessing this must have been the original gate into the compound because I can't see an opening in the dike anywhere else. But what a special little visit that's been to a, a historical little site. And it's cool just to save that history on the video to see how it was at a certain time, 2023. And we get an idea of how the structure looked because often if trees blow over in a storm it could hit the wall or damage the stonework and then the history is ruined or gone forever so with a video like this you can just see how it looked and it's cool to think even in 1926 they were digging there and finding things it makes me think what else is under the ground there still to be found what other interesting details of history is in the local area like this Check it out folks, this area has been cleared for them putting the fence around the new plantation. So it's just made an ideal little area for me walking up. The further up the hill I get, the view just looks more and more incredible. Looking out over the lands of Angus, all the way up onto the glens. But it's quite misty so I can't see as far as the sea today. I love the smell of the freshly cut timber, folks. It's just incredible. And all this timber's just been taken out of this section of forest in the past few weeks. And a few weeks ago, when I was up here with the Channel DJ, we looked at this old building, and we theorised it was an old BT mast building. But since then, I've actually been told in the comments that it was actually the old police radio in the 1950s, the old police radio building. And that's incredible to find out details. Imagine that in the 1950s, this was the police radio mast. And I love piecing bits of the puzzle together. Often when I go back somewhere, if I've learnt more history about somewhere, I always update the viewers. Whereas like modern police radios don't even need a mast like that anymore. 
there is another mast location on this hilltop but apparently that's what this one was so there's a cool bit of history folks i'm still just heading back off this wild hill now there's some cool machines here komatsu that's one of those processors with like a power saw that cuts the trees down and then there's a big valma forwarder i love seeing all those big machines and also i love seeing this incredible view over this mad landscape here of Scotland. It's breathtaking scenery. So that's me just about back down at the main road now, and I'm parked at the little village of Inverarity here in Angus. It's mad, it just shows if you go into a forest or something to find an abandoned historical wonder, it's often difficult to locate it because of the thick jungle-like terrain but also because of the amount of trees which was like blown over by the wind it took a wee while to locate it even though I knew roughly where it was but it was so much fun once we found it being able to document the final bit of history that I'm aware of on this lower hill yeah and it was just interesting folks anyway I'm just a bit back at the main road so I'll end this one here thanks very much for watching and I'll be back soon with the next adventure wherever I end up going